All right, so let's continue uh, building out a linked list. So as we know, a linked list is um, contains a head node and, or contains a head, which is a node and a, an individual node contains some data, it could be a integer, a number, it can be a word, it can be anything. And then also a pointer to the next node. So we kind of outlined and architected uh, or created the blueprint for an individual node, which contains a data and a next node. And we also kind of uh, created a linked list that contains a head node, but it, it could be initialized as an empty linked list if we needed to. And there are two methods that we can create using this. Um, it's not limited to just add and remove. We can do anything, just view or like, um, you can pretty much create any method you want, but the main ones are like add and remove. So, and let's actually just first create a link list. So I'm just gonna create link list one equals link list. And I'm just gonna initialize it without anything because that's how you usually do it. So if I initialize it with link list, and then I'm just gonna print uh, link list one. I'm gonna actually do it link list one, like so. And I'm gonna list everything out in here and run this file. You can see we have our link list object. And if I wanted to see what the head node is, which this is an empty head node, I can do dot head like so. And I can just clear that and run that again. Uh oh, it says. Uh, Oh, does it say it should be head node? That's right. So head node, clear and run that. So we have an empty link list and that does not have a head node yet. What questions do you have about that process of just creating an empty link list and checking the head node? Nope, pretty straightforward. So the first thing we wanna do is create an add method to our linked list. So when we actually want to add something, so like dot add and create an, a value. So for example, um, let's go try to create, create this linked list with four, seven, two, eight, six, nine, one. So I'm gonna, what is that? Four, seven, two, eight, six, nine, one. So I'm just gonna comment this out, just the numbers we want. Four seven two eight six nine one. I think that's what that was. Cool. So if I wanted to add the number four to my link list, what will I need? So add takes in the sum data, which is the number four. So the first thing I need to do. Does anybody know what's like? What's the first thing I need to do with that data? Assign it to self dot data. I guess assign it to self dot data up here. Uh, I think so. Yep. So I, so if I look at it, you're right. So I look at it, I need to create a node with that data. So the first thing I need to do is just create, let's create a new node and equals node. And this node object can take in data and the next and a next node, but it doesn't have to take in you. I can create an empty node, but both the data will be none and the next node will be none. So I'm gonna pass that data, which will be four into that. And I'm just gonna print new node just to see what that looks like. So on line 19, I create a new empty link list. I print that link list, which is gonna be a link list object. And I'm gonna add four to it and now that add method isn't built out yet we're just going to slowly build it out so i created a link list which is being printed on this line and then i add that four to it four we create a new node with that data assign it to a new node variable and i'm printing that new node and here we go we are printing that new node object and if I wanted to see what the value is at that new node, I can just print data, new node, which is a 
node object, and now I'm accessing the data value. So if I do that, I get four. But now I actually have to add this new node to the linked list. So what's the first thing I can test on the linked list to see where I should add it? Does anybody know? Nodes init method, I don't know. Well, the linked list, the head node, is initial value is none. So I can test if self.head node equals none, that, that means it's an empty linked list. And therefore I can just assign that new node to the head node. So now the linked list has a head node right here when I add that. So it's an empty linked list. I just created a head node. And I can test that by adding that. And so if I add four, I don't even need to print anything. Now, I, if I'm I, sorry, can, can you explain the logic? I, I don't understand why you're having to create a new head node. I, I thought you already created the class of it. So why would you have to then make like? So I'm not creating a new head node. I'm assigning this node to the head node because every linked list needs a head node. So when it, I initialize it here, it doesn't have a head node. So I, I, when I initially, then when I add the very first value to the linked list, it should be assigned as that head node because it's the first. It's the first element in the linked list. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. That, that four sense. is representing the head node. Okay. Okay. So if I print, so. I'm printing the linked list uh, and I, let's just do like head node. So if I print the head node there, it should be zero or none. And if I print the head node there, let's see what that looks like. So if I run that, the initial value right here on line 21, the head node is none. Now when I add four, the head node is this node object, which is right here. So I'm adding that new node object as the head node. And I can see that by grabbing the data from that head node to see if that value is four, which it is. What questions do you have about adding something to as the head node? I just yeah. had a question about the so, names. Yeah. Like, are, are all these names conventions or are they just variables that, that you kind of just created? Like data, neck node, et cetera? Yeah, head node, uh, the name of the class is like node and linked list. This is pretty conventional. Like this is what that is. And linked list is pretty standard to call it a linked list. Now, typically these aren't called head nodes. A lot of times I see in like documentation or it's just called head, but because it's the head of the linked list. But yeah, and like data could be Instead of data, it could be value and next node might just be next. But that's in, if you look at like resources that show you the implementation of a linked list, it's usually like data, value, and next, next node or head. So say I want to now, instead of adding four, I, I want to add seven now. So four is the head node. Now I need to add seven, which isn't attached to the head node. So the head node already exists. That node data value is four, but you always have to start at the head node. So I can't just like, all right, I can't grab, you can't access a value in a linked list by its index because it doesn't have an index because it's not really an array or anything like that, the data structure. So if I wanted to add seven, I need to start at the head node and work my way down. So I can start at the head node. I can say, hey, does the head, if, if 
there's a value at the head node. Now let's look at the head node's next value. If it has a value, then look at the next next node's next value, etc. So I just have to keep, I got to traverse the link list and go all the way down until I find a node that has that's next value is none. And once I find a next value that is none, I can assign that new value to that, that node's next value. So in this case, the linked list, I have a head node of four. I can say, hey, um, see if the, this head node's next value, see if it has a value. If it doesn't, then I just can assign seven as the, this, this head node's next value or next node. So that will look like something like this. Else, I'm gonna assign a current node because I, I, I kind of have to traverse the link list. I have to keep on going down the link list until I find a node that doesn't have a next value or a next node to it. So I'm gonna say current node equals self.head because I have to start at the head node because there's nowhere else to start. Uh, yep. And I could say, hey, while the current nodes uh, next node, so while the current node has a next vote node, I can reassign the current node to the current node's next node. So I'm like, reassigning the current node to the next node. So that's where I'm traversing down the link list until the current node's next node doesn't exist. Then it'll break out of the while loop. So if the current node next node is none. Therefore, this value will return as a falsy. Therefore, I can just assign the current node's next node to equal the new node and then just return the new node for whatever reason why. So let's actually um, link list.head node. Let's just run that and kind of show you. So the current head node is that, but what if I want to print the current nodes next node, which should equal a node of seven. And I can do that by See how it's a node, but now if I grab that data, that should equal seven. So the head nodes, next node, next node's data is seven. So the head nodes, next node is pointing to a node seven, which seven is its data. I can do the same thing with two. And so the next nodes, next node, and this is where you can just keep piling on. So the head nodes, next node, which is seven, seven's next node is a node of two, which, which is that. So I can run that and now that's two. So let's just, data, so the head node data is that, the head node's next node, data is seven. So I get four, seven, two. What questions do you have? Uh, my first the thing going on in my head is like, if this is a commonly used data structure, why, why, yeah, why isn't all this logic already OS. built in? You know, like built-in right. methods yeah. uh, in Python. <laughs> because, yeah, I don't know. Just because, I mean, there are libraries out there. You can import a library that's like a data structure library that already has all that stuff pre-built for you. Okay. Yeah, but, yeah. So let's take a look at the, so the head nodes data, which is four, then the head nodes next node data, is seven and the head nodes, next nodes, next nodes data is two. 
So the head nodes data is four, the head nodes next node is pointing to this node, which has a value or a data of seven. And then this, this next node is pointing to two, which has a value of two. And you can keep going. And what that's doing is I'm starting at the head node when I'm inserting, I'm assigning to a current node. When the current node's next node, as long as the current node has a next node, means it's not none, it's gonna reassign the current node to the current node's next node. So therefore it's like traversing down the link list until the current node's next node is none, then it breaks out of the while loop and then it assigns the current node's next node to that new node. A lot of current node talking and next node talking um, could get a little confusing. So I can just keep doing that all the way down Eight, six, nine, one, six, nine, one. And this is where you could just keep chaining that next node. What is it? Like that. So if I print that out, you're just gonna print off four, seven, two, eight, six, and then I can keep going. I can also add that dunder string method. So when I actually print a node, def dunder string. So instead of typing that data, uh, I can return f string uh, node. Uh, self dot data. So instead of printing data every time, I can just print the actual next node and it should print node four, node seven, node two, node eight, node six. And I can also say like next node is self.next node. So now you just get this big printed thing. Uh, let's see. So when I print <laughs> just that head node, it's gonna print everything. It's gonna print all the nodes. So four is the head node. The next node is node seven, which has a next node of two, which has a next node of node eight, which has a next node of six, nine, one. And then that next node is none. And this is just that dunder string method. That's what it's printing out as. I would say actually, that makes more sense. So a linked list would only, or it would make sense to use when like memory is a factor. I'm just trying to think like, when would I use this over like an array? Pretty much. I mean, you'd rarely ever actually implement a linked list. Um, like if you think, um, yeah, I've never actually implemented an actual linked list before. However, I did use the logic of traversing a linked list before. Um, but yeah, so the likelihood you'll ever have to implement a linked list in the real world um, is rare. What other questions do you have? But you should know what a linked list is and. So that's 
adding an element to a linked list. Removing an element is a little more cumbersome because not only do you have to traverse the linked list starting from the head node, once you find that linked list or once, once you find that node, you have to remove it from the linked list. So like decouple it, just completely remove it from the linked list. By doing that, you have to find it. You have to keep track, uh, keep track of the previous node. And so you'll have to keep track of this node's previous node, which is here. And you have to keep track of this, the node you're removing's next node, because then you have to connect the previous node to the next, next node, essentially. So that's a little more cumbersome. So what that looks like, again, you'll have uh, a data, you'll have a current node, the node you're starting at, which is the self.head node. And you'll also have a previous node, which initial value is none. And you start at the head node and you're gonna look for wherever, whatever node has this data value in it. And once you do, that's the node you're gonna to wanna to remove. So you can say like, hey, if self.head node or self, if current node, that data equals the data, um, the node I want to remove. I can remove that node by just reassigning the head node to the current head node's next value. So I can say self.head node equals the current node's dot next node. So I'm literally just moving. So if this was the head node, and I want to remove this node, I can just remove it and assign this node as the head node. Does that make sense? Any questions about that? So if I wanted to remove uh, link list one dot remove, and I wanted to remove four, I can print, or I'm sorry, yeah. Uh, print link list one dot head node and you'll see uh, what that looks like so I'm gonna get so initially I'm right here I I'm printing the link list with a head node of four and that's the link list and that I remove four and now the head node is seven and four is just gone. It's out, out of the link list now. But if I need to remove something like in the middle of the link list, this is where I can say, wow, the, the current node dot data does not equal the data. So the current nodes data value does not equal the, the, the value that I'm trying to remove. I'm gonna assign the previous node to the current node and assign the current node to the current, to the current nodes next node. So what that's doing Say this is four, what is it? Four, seven, two, four, seven, two, and I want to remove two. I'm traversing down, and now I found two, or if it doesn't equal, yeah. So let's actually just start from the very top. Here's four right here. If current, if four does not equal two, I'm assigning the previous node to the current node. So the previous node is now four and the current node is the current node's next value, which would be seven. So the previous node is four and the current node would be now seven or the node with the value of seven. And once I do, once I traverse it and find it, this is where I'm, I'm, I'm removing this node. 
So the previous node's next val next node equals the current node's next node. And then I can just return just the self.head node. So this line right here is where I'm attaching the previous node's next node to equal, which is this current node's next node, which is this node. So I'm attaching these two together. So if I wanted to remove two and print that, so before it's four, seven, two, eight, now it's four, seven, eight. I removed two and I'm assigning seven's next node to be eight. So that's two's next node, which is eight. What questions do you have about removing a node from a linked list? Uh, to be honest with you, like, I understand what you're doing in the context of, you know, just a, a set of numbers, but can, can you maybe like put this in a more practical application sense? Cause I'm having a hard time just like understanding why it's being used and why it's like this. Why like there's a link list and why it exists kind of. Yeah. I, it's like, I, I, I understand the general structure of that. It's not in like an, they are ordered, but it's in random. They're not like next to each other in the RAM. So, you know, I saw the, you know, the numbers bouncing back and forth and everything, but I don't like, I don't know. It's just kind of, <laughs> it's a weird concept to me. It's not like, I understand what you're doing in the code, but I'm not understanding like the application of it really. Like the implementation of it? Or yeah. like, like this part? Like what I'm actually doing here. Well, no, I, I I would say I'm even understanding that in terms of like how you are getting rid of a node mm -hmm. and like the general that flow chart. I'm understanding how that's happening. I'm just I guess I'm missing like the practical application of it. Of like why we're doing this. I, I know that sounds kind of stupid, but right. Well, so like the we just want you to understand that there are these things called data structures that will come up in that do exist in the realm of computer science and they are common behavior, common interview type questions um, as to like, like a common interview question might be like, find the node where two inner two link lists intersect with one another, something like that. Something that's like, you'll never do in the real world. It's like, what the hell is the point of that? It just, there to demonstrate your problem solving ability. So first you have to know what a link list is. Okay. And then you also have to determine like you have to test your problem solving ability, kind of like an algorithm type question. So they do exist in the world. Um, the likelihood you'll ever see a link list or a binary search tree in the, in the, in today's actually developing like as a web developer is slim to none. But we just kind of want to introduce to you, hey, the, there are these things that are very common data structures like stacks, queues, linked lists, binary trees that exist. And just to introduce them to you. So when you hear them, you're not like, what the, what the hell did you just like say? Um, but like this part as to like why a linked list exists is because of um, memory allocation. But like in today's like day, like we don't have RAM issues. Like we have as much memory as we actually want in the real world. But back in like the late seventies and early eighties, like memory was constrained. So they like, they'd have to think about these things when implementing this stuff. Gotcha. Okay. That, all right. That, yeah, that clears up a lot. <laughs> I was okay, kind of yeah. like, oh shit. I don't know, like, when do I need to implement this? Yeah. But you'll, you'll never have to implement it. And like the one time I like my, my first job, I was like, oh, cool. I actually get to utilize a link list for this specific problem of searching through. So essentially our problem was not even a problem. What we did, we, we kept track of where P 
people clicked on a website to see like their track, like, all right, they click this button, then they click that button and then they click that button is to like this determine like the route a user went throughout our application. And we stored that in a database, like that route. We stored like a, essentially stored a linked list type of route. We had like what they clicked on, what, he, what, what the event was and what was the next event, which would have been like the next node. And I implemented like the link list, like traversing a link list like this, like searching through it. And I was like, cool, I get to use it. And they're like, oh, you didn't need to do that because our database just has a, a simple method that traverses everything for us. That, so it's like already, already like this problem was already solved in one line of code when I didn't have to like. So it's kind of like an archaic thing that's still referenced to just like demonstrate knowledge of data yes. structure and everything yeah. like that. Yes. Okay. Okay. And depending on where you go to interview at, they'll put more, a more emphasis on data structures. Um, so, yeah. So like the Googles, the Facebooks, they'll, the Netflixes, they'll emphasize data structures in the interview process. And so, yeah. But don't spend a whole lot of time on it. If you want, if like, I didn't start learning this stuff until after I graduated from my program. I was like, all right, well, I'm going to start interviewing. And I downloaded that cracking the coding interview, the book. From I'm sorry, this is just kind of, this is just kind of a tangent before you did the coding boot camp, Did you have any experience in computer science or. I mean, no, no, nothing in computer science. No. Like I, all I did was like did web development in my free time in college, like three or four years prior. That's when I like got into it in like 2012 to 20, like 14 is when I would just do it for fun, but nowhere near actually implementing. Yeah. I didn't know shit about anything. I was basic, basic JavaScript, HTML and CSS. That's pretty much what I knew. But this book, it's, it floats around here in our classroom. We have a copy of it. I also have a copy of this. This is a good book to prepare for interv technical interviews. And this has a lot of uh, data structures type questions and what they are. It's worth getting uh, after you graduate. All right, uh, I am going to stop.